35. What is the relationship between the intermolecular forces in a liquid and its vapor pressure? Well, what's the relationship? Are they just friends? Are they single? Are they friends with benefits? Are they widowed, married, engaged? Just kidding. The relationship that they're always asking for is always whether it's a direct relationship, indirect, or no relationship at all. So the answer here lies in what's going on with vapor pressure, right? The word vapor is in vapor pressure. So we're dealing with something that is a gas. So when you reach a substance's vapor pressure, you are making a gas, right? And on the list of solid to liquid, so we'll say solid to liquid to gas, you can't really go any further than a gas. There is a supercritical fluid, but in terms of phase changes, solid, liquid, gas, that is your three physical changes. So basically the buck ends here at a gas. Now, just know that once you start making gases, you will start uh, acquiring a constant vapor pressure, only when you're at dynamic equilibrium. But the idea is that if you're starting from a solid and you're going to a liquid and you're going to a gas, keep in mind as to how these molecules, um, you know, how these molecules look like in terms of interactions. Here are three just simple boxes. And remember, solids are very, 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 very tightly packed together, right? They, they don't, they have a lot of intermolecular forces, um, no kinetic energy, very, you know, very little kinetic energy. Liquids, on the other hand, they are more spaced out, because they're able to move, right? But some of them are still going to be touching, and that's okay. But they have more kinetic energy than the solids. But in terms of the gases, they're jumping all over the place, right? They're, none of them are touching. And maybe I can do this by, like, little zoomies here. You know, zoomies. They're zooming all over the place. These would basically have, like, you know, one zoomie. Or, you know, one zoomie here, one zoomie here. So just know that as you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you are always increasing in kinetic energy. And since you are increasing in your kinetic energy, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just make this as a up arrow. As you're increasing your kinetic energy, remember kinetic Kinetic energy is the energy of movement, so it makes sense that the gases are all over the place, right? Solids, not so much. So as you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you're increasing your kinetic energy and you're breaking those intermolecular bonds that hold the molecules together. These gases, they're acting as like independent uh, gas molecules, so they don't have as much intermolecular forces as a solid would when you know they're all holding hands and they're hanging on for dear life. So as you increase your kinetic energy, you will decrease your intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. And remember, intermolecular forces are the forces between two molecules. It is not the interactions or what's going on with a single molecule. It's how two separate molecules uh, interact with each other. So as you can see here, the closer you are, the more interaction you have, right? Very close, very attracted. But the gases are all over, all over the place. They have no or rarely no interactions between the two molecules. So now, if we are reaching a gas, right, and have a gas pressure, so we're all the way over on this side, what's happening to the intermolecular forces? Yeah, they're dropping. So now we just have to make a relationship between intermolecular forces and the vapor pressure. More gas, more vapor pressure. So we could either say it as if we're increasing intermolecular forces or increasing vapor pressure. 
So we could basically say it as this way, since we have it written on the screen already. As intermolecular forces are decreasing, what's going on with the vapor pressure of the gas that's being collected? You're making more and more and more gas, so you have more and more and more vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure should, yeah, you got it, increase. Or you could have said this vice versa. As your intermolecular forces increase, meaning that you're going away from the gas, you won't have any gas. So your vapor pressure would drop. So basically, it is a indirect relationship. Indirect relationship. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. So let's just box this off. And that's it. What'd you think? Not too bad. Thank you for viewing the video. Uh, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for, for being here and for taking the time to learn from us. If you uh, are having trouble in physics and math, we also have videos about those subjects as well. Go check the channel out. We have like almost 5,000 videos and they're all designated to helping you video by video, solution by solution in those classes. So check it out. All right. I hope you guys are well. Uh, keep studying hard. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.